Welcome back. These last few weeks, we've been talking about the spiritual disciplines. What are the spiritual disciplines? The spiritual disciplines are the habits we practice, the things we can actually choose to do that then partner with the Holy Spirit to grow in us a heart that's more like Jesus, that has more fruits of the Spirit. There are many different spiritual disciplines, but in this unit, we've been focusing on five core habits that all Christians should practice to help them grow. What are they? Now, the first week we talked about prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is talking and listening to God. And we learned some different phrases that can help us pray about different things to God so that we're always not just focusing on one thing. What are those three phrases? Thank you, I'm sorry, or you're right, and please. Then we talked about reading, listening, or studying to the Bible. What is the Bible? The Bible is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. It's God's story. It tells us what is true. Last time we talked about serving. We talked about how we can actually serve Jesus. But how can we serve Jesus? He's God, he doesn't need anything. Last time we talked about how Jesus taught that anything you did for one of the least important of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. We talked about how we can serve people around us that we love or that are our enemies or that are against us in that moment or making our lives hard at the time. Like sometimes your brother or sister, man, you'd love them, but sometimes they're the ones really making your life hard. And we talked about how we can serve people through serving our church. Today, we're going to talk about giving. Giving is a spiritual discipline, and that means it makes our heart more like God's. How does it do that? How is giving part of God's heart? God is generous. God gives. He gave everything in giving us Jesus. Okay, so how exactly do we give to God? How's that even possible? Like serving, we give to God by giving to other people and by giving to other people through the church. We can align our hearts to God by giving to the things God loves. God loves people. And we are called to give to three sorts of things, basically. The first is giving so that more people can learn about Jesus and come to have a relationship with him and grow in that relationship. Two, giving to meet the earthly needs of people, especially the poor. That's how we make this world more like God's kingdom. And three, we can give to just be generous and show kindness and love to others. That's what we do a lot to the people we love at Christmas time. We don't give them things they need because they don't have enough food. We just give to show our love. When we give our money, we're investing in people and people last forever. Jesus said in Matthew 6, don't gather for yourselves riches on earth. Moth and rats can destroy them and thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, gather for yourself riches in heaven. Their moths and rats don't destroy them. Their thieves don't break in and steal them. Your heart will be where your riches are. What does it mean that your heart will be where your riches are? If we spend all our money on ourselves, on trying to make ourselves happy and successful in this life, then our hearts will be about that, ourselves. We will think about ourselves and our own happiness. And if we're spending our money investing in other people and in their eternal lives, that's what we're gonna care about. If we invest in God's kingdom, we will be invested in God's kingdom. The spiritual discipline of giving helps us care about what God's heart cares about. Let's take a few minutes to share about a time you were generous. Share a time you gave up something you wanted to someone else for someone else. Leaders, you can go first. We can and should give directly to people around us, to people we love and 
like we talked about last week, also to people who are our enemies. What was the example from last week about giving to our enemies? We give to people when they are in need and just to show love. Like you might share your lunch with a friend if they forgot theirs, or you maybe would save up your money to buy a special Christmas gift for your mom or dad. We also can give in these same ways when we give to our church. For example, did you know that when we gave money to build our church building that maybe you're sitting in right now, we also gave money to build an orphanage in India and recently, more recently, a youth center in El Salvador. We also support many of our orphans in the orphanage in India. And through COVID, we gave money so that they could transform that into a health center and help people who were sick. Maybe you and your family help support a kid in another part of the world. Pause the video and see if you're, anyone in your class does that. And as a church, we also do things just to show love to people, like Summerfest or Breakfast with Santa, where we just do fun stuff to show people that we love them. But when we give to our church, it's one of the best ways to help people hear the good news about Jesus. What are the, some of the things that we do as a church to help people know about and learn to love and serve Jesus? We do tons of stuff as a church to help other people know, love, and serve Jesus. Like Kids Church and Junior Youth, so that young people can learn about who Jesus is and learn to love him. We do day camp every summer, especially to invite all our friends who don't normally come to church. We have lots of events like Breakfast with Santa and other things where people can hear about the good news about God's kingdom. When we invest, when we spend our money on God's kingdom, then we're invested in God's kingdom, then we care about it. For example, have you ever saved up your money for a long time and bought something very special? How did you feel about that toy or that, that thing? Was it easy to just let someone else play with it or were you worried that it was gonna get wrecked or broken? When we work hard and put our money into something, we care about it more than if we didn't. And so when we spend our money on doing things for God's kingdom, we care about God's kingdom and it being built. The spiritual discipline of giving helps us care about what God's heart cares about. How many of you have a job or something where you earn money? If you do, take a second and share what that is. When you earn money, God called us to take part of that money and give it back to him. And you can do that by giving it to the church because the church spends it on all those things we just talked about. Then you need to save some and then the rest you get to spend. You should talk to your parents about how much you should be saving, like saving up for university or some driver's ed when you're older, some other bigger expense and how much you can spend. But first, before we save and then spend, we need to give a portion to God. You might hear this called the tithe. How many of you already have three separate piggy banks for giving, saving, and spending at home? If you do, how do you decide what goes in each? If you don't, how do you manage or decide what to do with your money? Maybe today you need to start a new habit when it comes to your money. Here's the thing, guys, if you start when you're really young to give first and then save next and then spend the rest, you'll never have to go through the struggle of figuring that out as an adult because you're just going to be doing it from day one, which is awesome. So if you don't already have three separate give, save and spend banks, you're going to get to make them today. But first, we're going to watch a story that's an awesome part of the Christmas story where we see an amazing example of giving. The story of Christmas, Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hello. Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. 
King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. Ah. As was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah. Not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews' star first appeared. Oh, God! And then King Herod told the wise men, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did, and then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with Jesus and Mary. They stayed in Egypt until Herod was gone, and it was safe for them to go home to Israel. <laughs> when they returned, an angel warned them about the new ruler of Judea, who was Herod's son. This way. So Joseph and his family went to the region of Galilee and found their new home in the town of Nazareth. Look good? Yep. We'll take it where Jesus would grow up and eventually do all the amazing things God had planned for him to do. The Magi were able to give to Jesus directly, in person, and they got to worship him in person. They were very rich men that were able to give up some of their riches to Jesus and to his family. They could have kept those expensive gifts for themselves, to keep their wealth and riches, but instead they chose to give it away. Since Jesus isn't in person here with us, how can we show this kind of love and worship to Jesus? By giving directly to others and by giving through the church. God gave up everything. He gave up being together in heaven, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to limit himself, to humble himself as a baby for us. Romans 8, 23 said, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all as he died on the cross. We obey God by practicing generosity, by giving to God through the church or giving to God by giving to other people directly. Then we're practicing having a heart like God who gave up everything for us, even his own son. We worship God for that and remember what he has done for us. Today, take some time to pray as a class. Pray through thank you, I'm sorry and please, and maybe focus on the role of money and stuff in your life. You can thank God for the things he's given you. You can say sorry when you care so much about stuff that you care more about it than other people. And you can ask God to help you and to help those around you who are in need. For today's craft, you're gonna make these awesome give, save, spend jars if you don't have them at home already and you're gonna get a chance to decorate them. 
And when you go home, you can explain to your parents, why do you have three different piggy banks? And you can start using it to help you practice the spiritual discipline of generosity. If you already have Give, Save, Spend jars, you're going to do another really exciting craft that I can't wait to see what it's going to be. See you next week.